If you know me, you know that I really like quiet computers. I even water-cooled my graphics card purely so it would make less sound. So when my laptop started spinning up its fans, even when doing small tasks, it started bothering me. Enter liquid metal thermal paste. Thermal paste is an electrically conductive compound that sits between the CPU and the heatsink that aids in the transfer of heat. The more thermally conductive a compound is, the better it will be at transferring the heat between the two surfaces. While usual thermal compounds usually top out at around 10 watts per meter kelvin, liquid metal can be as high as 70 to 80. That's 7 to 8 times more conductive than their paste counterparts. Unfortunately, in addition to being really thermally conductive, liquid metal is also electrically conductive. That means that if it gets out from anywhere except for the CPU and the heatsink, it has the potential of shorting a circuit and breaking your machine. Many devices are switching to liquid metal, such as the PS4 and 11th gen and newer Intel chips, which use solder in between the IHS and the CPU die. To liquid metal my machine, I unscrewed the bottom, disconnected the battery, and took off the fans and heatsink. After this, I cleaned off the existing thermal paste and applied two coats of conformal coating 15 minutes apart. This coating prevents the liquid metal from shorting out the surrounding capacitors in the case of a leak. After drying, I applied a very thin layer of liquid metal to the CPU and the heatsink. I put emphasis on thin. You don't want any pools of liquid metal that could potentially leak off of the sides. After this, I carefully connected everything back up and booted up the machine. Luckily, everything booted up fine and nothing seemed broken. I had run some CPU and GPU benchmarks before doing the liquid metal. So after this, I tested the same benchmarks again to see if the performance improved. For the GPU benchmark, I used Unigen Heaven. I found that although the overall score did not improve, the temps were much lower. This seems to make sense because I didn't overclock the GPU and the temps before liquid metal weren't at the thermal limit so there was no throttling happening. Because of this, I did notice that the fans were running a lot quieter than before which was in the end of the day what I was looking for. For the CPU benchmark, I used Prime95 and tracked the temps and the CPU clock as time went on. I also noticed here that the fans were running a lot quieter than before and when checking the clocks and the temps, the temps were cooler than before and the chip was throttling a lot less. Perhaps if the cooler was a bit beefier, we would see less throttling with the liquid metal, but I'm satisfied with the results. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you thought it was worth it, if you do the same, please let me know. Anyway, that's about it. See ya.